You want to see something cool? Something I think is really cool? Deep Snow is coming to Wolf Quest. I've been wanting to do this for, well, forever. And we even had a simple prototype of this working two or three years ago with the Microsplat Terrain Shader by Jason Booth. But it devils in the details and we realized there would be quite a bit of work to actually implement it and work through all the complications. What kinds of complications? Well, you think about it. Some animals are big and heavy and they punch down all the way through the snow and some are small and lightweight and they kind of float on top of the snow and some only sink down partially. And then if one of the small animals crosses the tracks from one of the big animals and then you got the meat chunks and the collectible items and well, you get the idea complicated. So we had to set it aside so we could focus on the bigger stuff that we've been doing for the past two and a half years. But this summer I brought in another Unity developer, Raul from Romania, to work on some things for the upcoming Lost River DLC. And after he did a bang-up job on that stuff, I thought, well, let's let's have him tackle the snow. And of course, it's always more complicated than you think. It always takes longer than you think, but finally got it working pretty well. So how does it work? Here we are in the Unity editor looking at Amethyst Mountain snowing. One thing we've got to work on this kind of thing is this handy little uh, debug, this little cheat slider, where I can adjust the snow height, which normally just shows the uh, opacity of the snow lying on the ground, but now it actually raises the surface of the snow. Here we can get another view from over here, and we can see that this affects not just the terrain and now the height of the snow, but also the trees and rocks and everything in the scene, everything in the game world. So here I can turn on the, the wireframe overlay. So how this works in Unity is that everything here is composed of triangles, polygons, but in this case triangles, and so when the snow rises, it's tessellated, which means the polygon surface is subdivided over and over again into smaller and smaller triangles, denser and denser network of triangles. And the reason you do that, instead of just keeping the same number of triangles, is because you want to actually have more detail in that surface. Sometimes you can use that for rocky ground or something like that. We're just using it for snow here. And I can also control how dense this tessellation is. And the denser it is, the bigger the performance impact. So you want to find just the sweet spot where there's enough to have it smooth and look like what you want it to look like, but not so much as to really hurt performance too much. And for the surface of the snow, that doesn't matter so much how, how dense it is because we want a pretty smooth surface. But where it comes into play is when the animal makes those tracks in the snow. Now the wolf itself is about 12,000 triangles, but oddly enough that doesn't give us the kind of control we really want over the snow tracks. And so we have these proxy shapes, these little capsule colliders, that are actually the ones carving the track in the snow. I can adjust each of these shapes independently to control how the trench is carved. So this is what we get to look at all day when we're working on the game. Every animal has these capsule colliders which define where the snow is removed when they move around. And so you can see I've got two for the body and the head and then four skinny colliders, capsule colliders for the legs. And that's to try to create this kind of ragged trench in the snow as the animal moves around. And so now going back to the tessellation, this is where it comes into play, is that we want a pretty smooth, but not really totally smooth, trench in the snow. And so the more we tessellate, the more triangles there are, the smoother that trench is going to be. And so again, it's a trade-off, as always, with everything in game development, between how you want it to look and work and what the performance impact is. So here I've cranked up the tessellation, and that's a much smoother thing. I can also increase the the memory allocated to this deformation of the snow. And increasing that takes about four times more memory, but also creates much smoother tracks. So in the game, these will be tied into the quality settings. As you go up to maximum graphics, you'll get nicer snow tracks. I should also mention that this, because of these performance issues, is only going to be available on the higher quality levels. For sure, and it'll be on fantastic and glorious using the high terrain quality. I think we're gonna be able to get it working well enough, fast enough on the medium terrain quality, so that's the default setting for beautiful. Below that, it won't be the default option. You could choose it, but if you're already running on one of those lower graphics qualities, uh, probably not gonna run well. So we still have some tweaks and polish and refinement, but it's coming together. Of course, we've had the usual variety of bugs and goofy things while we're working on it, trying to calibrate the snow depth offset on different meshes and synchronizing the snow offset for live animals and carcasses. Don't quite match up here, but it's getting there. And it is working on all maps, including 
the upcoming Lost River DLC, and wintertime in downtown Lost River is quite pretty. Of course, with all this working now, it, uh, it suggests more things we could do with deep snow. The most obvious one, of course, being that in deep snow, animals really should, if in a group, follow in the tracks of the lead animal. And that would be really cool to do, and we'd like to do that, but that's a whole nother component of pathfinding navigation functionality. And unlike the rest of this, that would take Tommy away from working on the saga. And right now, the saga is our top priority. So that would be really cool, so maybe someday. So this is coming in the next patch, which is coming soon in the next couple weeks to Wolf Quest Anniversary Edition.